Howdy y'all, Barry Carpenter here. I would like to welcome all of our new subscribers that we've gotten here lately, and uh, I want to thank those who have shared our videos. I appreciate that so much. And to the new subscribers, I would say that uh, I would like for you to hit the bell so that you can be notified of the next videos that come out. And also, you may want to go back and watch some of the previous videos that we've done on the log cabin build because there's quite a bit of information in there that you will need when you start your own cabin. You see I left a, a 3 eighths of an inch gap. I had some treated lumber and I just ripped it to 3 eighths of an inch and put it on the back side of this ledger. And that will let water go over the end of the sheet of plywood and not be hanging up here anywhere. And I also did that with these blocks right here the edge of the plywood will actually come to, to this, this edge right here. And there's a, a gap between there to let water go on through. I've done this all the way around the building. And this, this block will give the plywood support from underneath at the, at the logs. I've done that everywhere uh, down between the joists on both sides. I've got my girder in and the post underneath the girder sitting on some uh, concrete uh, pads. I like to put a, a post every four feet and I also came back uh, since I had some four before posts left over and that's what I used to come off the top of the, the girder up to underneath the joists to support them. I got up on this thing and trying to bounce these oak logs and they had very very little flex. Very little at all. This girder is coming out to the outside edge of the log there will be a half log that goes in this area right here and it will be supported in the middle off of this girder and uh, we'll be able to rest on the piers up against the sill logs on either end. I've snapped a blue line on top of the joist where I'll bring the uh, first sheet of plywood over to that line. I'll use uh, construction adhesive on top of the joist and I'll use torque screws and screw the plywood to the joist and I don't think there'll ever be any squeaks and like I said these joists are super strong. I've got one row of plywood down on the subfloor. Before going any further I'll show you what I did. You can see these little blocks down through here. I screwed them on there clamped them on there with the, some slide bar clamps and the reason I'm, I'm putting a block there is this is not tongue and groove plywood and I'll be using a hoist to uh, lift the logs and roll them around and set them in place so while I'm doing that with that hoist all of the weight will be on three wheels and I don't want to roll over the edge of something that is not protected so I'm, I'm putting a block there and on this next run that I'll be doing over here, I'll do the same thing. I'll put a block there to support that edge all the way around. It'll serve the same purpose as uh, these, these blocks that I put in around the outside perimeter. So I'm ready to cut another piece and put it up here and glue it down and, and put some screws in it.
There's something about a building when you get the floor in, it just seems to feel a little bit bigger. And I'm happy with the size of this, 12 by 16. I believe this little building will be pretty useful with a wraparound porch and a 12-12 pitch roof with a loft in it. It'll be hopefully a cute little building. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the series of the videos of, of, of bringing this together and all the things that I'll be sharing with you. Alright, I've got the linseed oil rolled on there, so I'll be in good shape with it. Give it another coat when it dries out. Yeah, now we can walk around on the dance floor. Or if you can dance, you can dance on the dance floor. But, I'll have to sit in the corner and watch, because I cannot dance. Now it's time to set the hoist up. I'll be able to roll it around on this floor and pick up logs and set them right where I want them.